All right, guys, how we doing? John here out in the shop. I hope you guys know how this thing goes back together because I haven't a clue. And I'm pretty sure I can get it. Um, so the 2100. These are the parts that are not going back in the saw. I'm just scrapping that. Also, all of the hardware is going to get replaced. Everything I can. Some of the little special, you know, specialty bolts and stuff. The, you know, they'll every saw is going to have, uh, especially these older ones gonna have a few little bolts that are pretty tough to get rid of but for the most part anything that I can new hardware new mounts everything I can find uh, obviously seals gaskets everything like that I plan on doing a two-piece head and I don't like this intake I really don't so we're getting rid of the stock carburetor that'd be this guy right here let's grab this so I want to put this 3120 carb, so this is off the 3120 Husky, quite a bit bigger, and that that intake on the cylinder is going to be a choke point. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it. Um, I might just do a separate impulse line and, you know, reshape that intake altogether. I'm not quite sure yet, but the cylinder, the cranks, and the flywheel are all getting sent out to an outfit, a place in Arizona. And they're going to split the cranks, switch the connecting rods, which, yes, guys, <laughs> uh, some people are funny. They comment like, you know, that's different. It's not going to fit in there. Yes, uh, you know, that's kind of the point. But, yes, I know that an 084 crank doesn't just, you can't just take this out and put this in. I completely understand that. It's a little more, a little more involved than that. But there's somewhat of a, some, some method to my madness, I guess you could say uh, and sometimes it is just madness, but that's the plan. Put that connecting rod onto that crank. And the reason I still have the bearings on, because one of the questions I get asked a lot, which is kind of crazy, is how I pull bearings. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys. It's really uneventful. I think if you guys are battling it, I've heard people saying they're heating them and all this stuff, and you don't need to. You just need the right tool. I'll show you how I do it, but I use this tool. I don't know if I have a part number or a link, but it's it's for pulling bearings specifically. So the reason that it's nice is because the, the jaws on it, uh, the feet, whatever you want to call it, super thin and they taper. So you can get under. You get under these bearings most of the time. In fact, almost all the time. When you tighten these two nuts down and it, it squeezes the feet together, it pops that bearing loose, uh, breaks the bond, and then they just they run out like a regular puller. So it's actually, like I said, very uneventful. But I think if you guys are having a lot of trouble battling these bearings, it's it's just because you don't have the right tool. It, it's really quite easy if you got the right tool. But that's that's what I got going on now. I had to jump on this because I do want this saw uh, ready for this race season, which I believe is in June, and. Uh, you know, I'm at the mercy of another business. I know you guys are, my customers are probably laughing at me now like, oh yeah, how's that going to be waiting on somebody else? Because I'm notoriously late on my deadlines. I don't mean to be, I just take on too much. But yeah, I have to send that off, getting it bored out, relined, the crank split, balanced. I'm sending the flywheel also. And I'm going to shave a bunch off the flywheel to get that balanced. So I'm really excited to get that stuff done. And then... I'm gonna make a two-piece head for it. Um, also, I do have to find what piston I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run obviously a different piston. I want to run a Wiseco piston, the forged Wiseco with Seco, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, I've been using those pistons back since my dirt bike days, 25 years ago. Jeez, I'm old. But uh, yeah, I, I really love the Wiseco pistons. They are an amazing, amazing uh, company. Just one of the most. Uh, I'll never forget the first time I used one of their pistons. I was just blown away at the quality and the performance. Doing just a piston swap, amazing, the performance. Uh, some of them go from double ring to single ring. You know, there's a lot of different, you know, they'll come actually have like a pop-up. Uh, they'll make their skirts different lengths to help timing. They're, they're just really good pistons. If you guys have the mechanical ability and the, the piston is available, I would highly recommend. They're they're expensive. They're about they're over one hundred and fifty dollars just for a piston, but well worth it. Um, so yeah, this is what we got going on. We got these parts are getting scrapped. We're not not reusing these. I think this is an aftermarket piston as well. A little bit of 
scuffing on it, but we're not using it anyway. Definitely getting rid of that muffler, uh, the felling dogs, all that. Obviously new seals, gaskets. It did have like a really small intake stack on it. So I'll use that for like a 200T or something. But yeah, we're getting rid of those parts. I am one of the fuel tanks had some damage on it. That was this one had a little bit of a JB weld or whatnot on there. So we're gonna swap that out. This one was uh, way better shape. So all these little mounts, I'm gonna see if I can get new mounts for it and swap them out. And yeah, the you know it's not gonna have a choke. It's it's gonna be bare bones, built for nothing but power. Really tight tolerances for cutting you know bigger wood, and it won't have to run for long periods of time. So I can get away with you know a hotter build so it can build up heat because it's it's going to get ran for you know a minute or two and then shut off so that gives me a huge advantage for how i can build it i think this three-quarter wrap handle is really is really bad the chain obviously when the chain jumps it cuts away at this this handle so that thing is about shot but i don't think i mean you don't need a full wrap on a saw like this a race saw so i might either just make a new handle for it or just cut this apart because it ain't no good like that I actually did have a brand new, so this is a new old stock. What a crazy part to have, huh? New old stock flywheel. How crazy is that? I've had this thing for so long, never knew what I was going to do with it. Well, now I know. Probably nothing because I already have one. So, there we go. The uh, really crazy ignition module in these. Pretty different, but same deal. I'm... I don't know much about the 2100s to be to be quite honest. They have the I've seen this in another saw, some other different style saw. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but where the crank seal is in this oil pump assembly and this whole thing just goes on. It's kind of a goofy setup, but I'm going to do something with the seals, make sure they stay in a little better. Um lots of stuff. The recoil, really impressive recoil system in this. Um the the pulley is aluminum. It has the, you know, the, the three legs for, you know, catching on these, these paws, just built like a tank. And then the oiler gear has one of these, like, I think this is brass or whatever, oiler gear. So this saw is built to, to last. Uh, I do have, I also do have a new old stock clutch. So probably going to be swapping that out. Other than that, yeah, it's making making this stuff look all nice and pretty. The guy wants it looking good. Not only these race saws, you know what I mean? They, they gotta be fast, but more importantly, they gotta look really cool. And that's what I'm gonna do. So maybe it'll be Hulk green or who knows? I might just get the, you can get the, the factory RAL, I think they call it the, the paint code. And I might just powder coat everything, the original color, but heavy old saw, all metal. You know, this is metal, this is plastic here, but that's about the only plastic on the saws that that cover other than that this thing is all metal even the the recoil pulley so pretty badass i'm really excited it's a cool looking saw it's, it's built like a tank and i'm really excited to see what i can get out of this thing this is going to be the most powerful saw that i've built